In this update, we have intense storms with severe wind gusts and embedded derecho potential, plus the heat takes it up to another level. And we'll also take a look at the extended range. Welcome back, everyone. Pal Ponder on Weather here with the Tuesday afternoon update. We got a lot to talk about. So let's delve into the details this afternoon. There's a huge swath, actually about a 2,000 mile swath of storms going to be impacting the U.S. today, impacting around 40 billion people. We have a large swath of slight risk, but they did, in fact, upgrade to a moderate risk for severe supercells taking place in parts of the Dakotas this afternoon. In fact, it's already happening right now, but these supercells will continue to traverse east southeastward throughout the afternoon into the evening time frame and really going to be really packing some intense winds in its wake so let me break down those winds and take a look at the most impactful areas so like i mentioned they did in fact upgrade this in the afternoon update to a level four moderate risk for severe wind in parts of uh, brandon and to, uh, brookings here into south dakota those areas could see about a 45 percent potential as seeing some of those 80 to 90 mile per hour winds but really anywhere in this black shaded hatched risk area from Sioux, Sioux City to Waterloo all the way to Rochester to Watertown to Redfield and to Pierre those areas are the highest probability areas of seeing some of those 75 80 even upwards to close to 90 miles an hour supercells going to be embedded with these mesoscale convective systems and these are just now actually getting their act together and they're going to be traversing east to southeastward along that boundary so in fact they did actually upgrade to a little bit of a, a tornado risk as well for those same areas we've been talking about this potential and in fact the storm prediction center has now including this in their wording in the afternoon update a duration with embedded significant severe wind gust appears probable from central to eastern South Dakota into southwest Minnesota and northern Iowa into the evening time frame. We've been talking about this potential on this channel for a couple of days now. So we've had a lot of lead time leading up to this event. And it definitely looks like it's going to unfold this afternoon into the early evening time frame. So you need to be on high alert. Uh, in the impacted areas. In fact, they already have a severe thunderstorm watch that it does include parts of Pierre and DeWinter back into Mitchell, those areas that have that you know moderate risk in place with that 45% hatched risk. Look at that scattered wind gust of up to 90 miles an hour. That's hurricane force, if not almost category two hurricane force winds. And not only that, but they could be looking at some tennis ball size hail up here as well so there's a small tornado threat but the main concern with this event tonight is going to be your scattered significant severe wind gust in fact they already have a severe thunderstorm warning that includes a life-threatening situation for those same areas right now need to be in their safe zone of seeing some 90 mile per hour winds and some ping pong size hell so this is a significant event that's unfolding currently and it will unfold all throughout the afternoon so you need to be taking your uh, safe zone and have plan b in place with with all the winds they're going to be heading impacting these areas tonight if we move a little bit further back into sioux city they also included another severe thunderstorm watch back into sioux falls uh, those areas will be under the gun into the uh, early evening time frame through seven o'clock but also Seeing those 90 mile per hour wind gusts with a couple of tornadoes is definitely possible in this area. So yes, some, some pretty significant weather are gonna be unfolding this afternoon. And look at the overall wind swath oh, coming out of the Dakotas, coming out of Iowa, going through portions of Nebraska. There are your 90 mile per hour winds. Even the radar talked about it this morning with the latest convection models now up to 92 miles an hour. So this is coming to fruition and unfolding as we speak. And that will continue to come out of the Dakotas and going into portions of Iowa. And that will transfer into portions of Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, and back into West Virginia all throughout the tonight going into tomorrow morning. So this is your wind gust over the next 
24 hours really along this boundary. And so if you take a look at the overall lightning perspective and where some of the lightning strikes may be over the next 24 hours, it's right in this zone. That's essentially right in this zone. They start getting their act together in portions of the Dakotas and they traverse east, southeast along this boundary. So Nebraska's in line, Iowa's in line, the, all those areas, southern, weather, southern Wisconsin, basically northern Illinois, northern Indiana, pretty good chunk of Ohio is going to be under the gun as well as West Virginia here with those lightning strikes over the next 24 hours. And there's your overall radar depiction on where that swath and some of the heaviest rains will be it's really right along this bullseye yes we do have the conveyor belt of moisture from the monsoonal flow but the really the main concern and the most impactful areas for property damage and could be life damaging you know setups this afternoon so that's why you need to be on definitely a high alert as these winds are going to be cranking up to 90 miles an hour and these could be also moving around 50 60 even upwards to 70 miles an hour so you're not going to have almost little to no warning with these particular setups as they continue to dive east southeast and they could be dumping some pretty significant rains as well so for me anywhere from uh, pierre to chicago to dc all the way through ohio getting into west virginia there's that huge swath of a slight risk and that's pretty indicative of possibly two to four inches with that rain so not only do you have that slight tornado threat you've got that very large hail threat but also that really intense severe uh, severe wind gust threat and then compounding with those two to four inches of hot, widespread heavy rain along that path and even further south let's take a look at this setup too because these gulf temperatures down there are just crazy warm bath water type temperatures and we do have heavy rainfall could be looking at one to three inches down here towards new orleans back into mobiles and southern mississippi alabama areas those areas are looking at one to three inch per hour rainfall rates and anywhere we could be looking at some isolated totals of four to six inches in some of these isolated spots so fairly significant flash flooding event unfolding further off to the deep south as well so definitely be on a high alert uh this afternoon with flash flooding impacting those areas but like I mentioned, the Gulf is <laughs> just about on fire. I mean, we got all that record heat that's unfolding across the Southern Plains, pretty intense, and it's just gonna get more intense. And it's really elevated these sea surface temperatures, especially in the Gulf of Mexico. I mean, these are Celsius temperatures, but all, look at the graph on the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. We're talking upwards to 30, 31, 32 Celsius. So that's 86, 88, if not upwards to 90, 90 degree uh, sea surface temperatures, really right along the coast. So why is it gonna be raining so much in Louisiana? It don't take much you got an extreme amount of water vapor just right up right along the coast so yeah we got a little bit of lull in the lull in the uh, hurricane activity right now but hey it's not going to take much you get some anything that's in the open waters of the gulf with the low shear and this type of environment all bets are off so yeah enjoy the quiet time right now but it could be pretty busy especially as we get into august time frame so yeah if you if you do like weather, uh, you know, if you do value my channel and you like what you see so far, go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe. If you hadn't already, it's free to do so. I right, hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell. So you'll get notified whenever I upload my daily updates to keep you well ahead of the storm. But man, today they just actually expanded the overall heat advisories for a good chunk. I mean, we're talking 10 to 12 states here. Heat advisories, excessive heat warnings, and by this weekend, it just gets crazy intense. This thing just expands even more. I know we're getting the deep in the heart of summer, but man, <laughs> these are some crazy temperatures. They're going to be unfolding. You think it's hot now? It's really going to be hot, and, and uh, another five, you know, five to six days as these heat heat advisories really start to expand and and to really unfold and take a full brunt of a uh, summer. But tomorrow, it just continues because. We do have that intense stuff today, but tomorrow we still have a, yes, another band, another mesoscale convective system is going to be blowing up in the heat of the afternoon, potentially starting in Montana, traversally, you know, crossing over the east-southeast boundary. 
So now those areas might shift a little bit further off to the south a little bit because that that ridge of high pressure shifts a little bit further towards the central u.s so now under the gun are, are these areas of indianapolis cincinnati columbus louisville back into charleston roanoke into knoxville those areas into charlotte greensboro wilmington and all those areas back in towards virginia beach is going to be uh going to be impacted with those cells you know a potential high wind threat as well on wednesday even on thursday it doesn't move out of the picture so we have a conveyor belt of systems starting today and i think it's going to be one after another going into thursday time frame a lot of the same areas are going to be impacted again with another these mesoscale convective complexes but down further to the south with that ridge of high pressure here's the current uh, soil moisture through actually june the end of june and yeah i don't need to tell you it's so dry in texas in the midsection of the country they're just begging for precipitation why is it getting so hot because the ground is so dry now and you can see where the rain has been where the actual soil is fairly moist down here for you know to, to end june uh back into the pacific northwest where they did have a lot of rains earlier now it subsided a little bit but still along this northern boundary here it's pretty wet average to well above average and a good chunk of where they're going to be experiencing those you know derecho type setups they technically don't really need much rain they're you know pretty much uh, saturated soils or at least average soils up there uh, but they do need some rain where they are going to be getting some heavier rains today into portions of uh, louisiana but to, as we go into the weekend we're starting to see huh, subtle shifts in the pattern we do have a potential low pressure system coming off in the nor northeast i think that's actually going to be shutting down this these mesoscale derecho type setups but that's not going to be until this weekend now, by the time we get into Saturday time frame, we could be looking at some isolated storm activity into portions of the southeast, but that ridge of high pressure just continues to shift, and now it's pretty much locked and loaded over a good chunk of Texas and Oklahoma, and they're going to be seeing some of those hottest temperatures of the year. In fact, here's the overall temperature anomalies between now and the next seven days, and pretty much puts the bullseye of the highest temperature anomalies good chunk all over texas all over oklahoma kansas right along this zone where the ridge of high pressure is going to be more or less in over your head and it will be over your head by this weekend i think you got about one more week for portions of the west and the pacific northwest where you are going to be seeing at least average to somewhat below average temperatures for you guys and then you have that trough coming in from the from the east going to be a little bit below average as well especially for new england but here's your overall precipitation anomalies for the next seven days and yeah all that ridge of high pressure that brown shaded area that's not much rain to speak of if not zero on the board but all your above average precipitation will be right in this zone and this ring of fire type pattern that's going to be unfolding for the next several days throughout the end of the week for sure right along this boundary so if you live in these areas right along this boundary you need to be on high alert not just today tomorrow thursday and even actually potentially friday before i think this pattern somewhat breaks down going into the weekend but beyond that it could be even just more intense i mean for early indications now that hey you know the drying soils and we could be looking at more intense heat again same areas as we get towards the 11th say 12 maybe 13th time frame of july over north texas over oklahoma with some intense heat and like i mentioned this weekend going into early next week we, we could be looking at some of the hottest temperatures we've seen in many years in these areas even upwards to with some latest guidance approaching 110 degrees that's some that's some crazy stuff not historic by any stretch of the imagination but still anytime you get temperatures of 110 that's definitely a sight to see so you're talking about excessive heat warnings and uh, just the compounding effect of the heat they've been dealing with for, for, for an extended time frame. And I think this just gets more intense as we get to the weekend and to early next week as the ridge of high pressure will slowly shift off into the west. Now we're talking probably hundreds and portions of Idaho here with these 80s, if not 90s coming back for the Pacific Northwest. So the cool down you're going to experience for the next week again is going to be you know what you've been seeing 
Uh, but I think we're going to have an extended warm up uh, after after we get past towards a week time frame. And there's a little bit of signs of earlier shift in the overall pattern. There's some signs at the end of the tunnel. This is a long ways out. So you can, this obviously will probably change, but you know, hey, we're looking at any signs of hope to maybe break this pattern further south. And if that ridge of high pressure will continue to shift over time towards the middle of the month and start impacting those areas along the west, that'll open the door for that back door front to come in from the northeast and shift a little bit further south and eventually somewhat trying to break down that ridge <laughs> it's trying folks i mean it's got a long room to go but there are signs at least in the extended range that maybe just maybe this might be enough towards the middle of the month that it might be break that breaking this down at least for a little bit in the overall extended pattern so that maybe looks something to look forward to if you live in oklahoma if you live in texas where you're saying come on pal i can't take this anymore <laughs> we do have some signs of hope on the extended range so and you can see that on the updated uh climate prediction center update as well with that ridge of high pressure slowly now this won't be until the middle of the month but the ridge of high pressure swings off the west coast. You have a pattern flip there with the below average temperatures now. Above average temperature will take place. You have some below average temperature anomalies swinging into parts of the Ohio Valley and if not near normal as you extend towards even into parts of Texas. So I guess near, near normal then is like 97 in Dallas. So you got to take it what you get. It might not be 105 or 110, but it might not be 100 degree, 110 degrees. So, and then there are even some signs of maybe even a little more rain. So, I mean, you're, you're, you're kind of looking at a little bit of everything here, you know, so where these areas are getting the rains now could see the below average, to, you know, rains and then possibly some higher rains, maybe a little bit of a slightly above average rains for that middle of July time frame as we go in towards portions of the deep south. So, hey, I appreciate you guys uh, following you shout out to all my channel members out there greatly appreciate it you uh, being a channel member if you do want to be a channel member as well you can click the a link in the description below and catch the next update why I protect you before and after the storm